Hi, Joe Cerrone. And Al Rosen. And we're going to go through the lecture for chapter three. Uh, if you go into the main splash page for D2L, this is our weekly Zoom meeting, and we're looking at our assignment. I've, we've already posted uh, our uh, previous video earlier. Our chapter two information, and we're doing the chapter three right now. It's processing on YouTube. I think it's done if you click on this. Chapter three. 10 minute video. And that brings it down to a PowerPoint. We made a PDF of it so it's easier for it to come up because if you wait until a PDF uh, PowerPoint comes up, it takes longer to regenerate. So let's look at these chapter objectives because they're really very command orientated. And so if we want to look at using these different commands, um, we'll go through them. And we'll go through them kind of in the order as we're working. And we'll also look at using polar tracking. And, and I don't think we'll get to point styles because it's not that important at this point. But we'll start to go through just command by command as we go through. Drawing templates. Al has done a great job of putting together templates for the course. And so you can go over here, go into the main D2L, excuse me. And then you can download the template. Direct me to it sure. right here, right, Al? That's correct. If you left click on it, it comes onto the bottom left hand corner. Say open to it. And when it comes open, this is what comes up. Now, what's nice about this is you got a B sized paper, just like an architect or an, or an interior design person would use to give a drawing perfectly sized. And on the bottom right hand corner, bottom left hand corner, you will see it says floor plan right next to it says model and we will click on model itself right there and that is set up for architectural ready preset right and so al's got the layers in it he's got the dimension styles all the little things that you take for granted when you start to work with it switching back to our powerpoint so drawing templates, that's all they are. And then the extension is DWT on these because it allows you to save it as a different file. And so it's like a generic vanilla title block that you open and then you get to name it after yourself or after the drawing. It's basically if some of the people who used to use paper on a board, you used to take it out of a drawer of a tube, lay it out, uh, put a T-square or triangle or whatever else on the bottom and tape it down and it'd have a border on it, would have the prototype, the name, and everything else onto it. And all you have to do is fill in your name and keep on going. Polylines. Polylines are really shapes. And so what they are is line segments that are treated as single entities. So when we look at drawing things here, and we look at the polyline command, what the polyline command allows us to do is to draw a bunch of lines like this, and then it's treated as one shape. And so when I click on it, everything highlights. And they're great for doing stuff like 3D. And so when I, I draw polylines, I can do things like model, which we'll get into later, but things like shapes are really important because they're made up of polylines. And then if I Go back to a top view and I draw more polylines. Other polylines would be things like a rectangle. And I'll turn off the grid so you can see it. Let's use a different color. Or a, um, a polygon, number of sides, six. Like that. And the reason we like them is because they're boundary shapes and they work really well when we start going into 3D. And so eventually we'll get into some of these other shapes and then we can do things like extrude them, 3D print them. So there's a method to working with these polylines and then being able to, to do things. Continuing on. The offset command allows you to offset objects at a specific distance or through a point. And so when we look at the drawings like of this 
lamp, we can use the offset command. Let's say I wanted to redo this part right here. I can delete those. And what I did was I highlighted them with a window and then they have grips on them. And then I can go up here and I can erase. Or on a keyboard, just hit F, uh, delete either way. Offset. Or right click on a mouse and it will say erase also. And you'll see a pencil eraser there. And so the offset command allows you to offset these shapes at a specific distance, whether they're lines, if they're polylines like this one, it does the entire rectangle. Polylines. Continuing on, so our video doesn't get too long. We're five minutes in. Explode. Explode used to be a stick of dynamite, wasn't politically correct. So now they put it as a box with the walls coming off of it. So things like polylines like this can be exploded by clicking on it and then saying explode. And what that does is it turns them into individual line segments. And that's all it does. It also works on things like blocks. And so when we start to work with the interior design um, design furniture, center. Yeah, furniture and et cetera like that, you can then explode it and adjust it, modify it, then bring it back into a block and use it again. Instead, right. of, instead of reinventing the wheel, you're just modifying it. So once you use polylines or once you join line geometry together, sometimes you need to unjoin it and that would be the explode command. ID point allows you to just get a, a location. We don't really need it so much at this point, so we'll come back to that but it basically gives you the X, Y coordinate value. It's good for mechanical stuff. Trim is something we need to go over because we use trim a lot. So if we want to trim something here, what we need is a line that crosses something. So if I draw a line all the way through our table down here at the bottom, and then I wanted to trim it between the legs, what I could say would be trim. And the best way is to select enter after you use the trim command, because what it wants you to do is to make things a cutting line. So again, if I go trim and then I hit enter, everything is a cutting line. And then you can see as I hover, it'll show me what's gonna be removed. So I can remove this, I can remove that, remove that. And that's the trim command. If I have other lines that go through it, And it doesn't matter if it's a line or a circle or a, an arc. You go trim. Always hit enter after you hit the command because it just works better. And then click on the stuff you want to remove. Now remembering, it's like a haircut. You can't have a whole haircut, can't afford it. So I do get a trim. Now you have to also understand that he has three vertical lines there. He cannot trim those from the other one because they're nothing going through them, nothing existing. So all you have to do is click on them and delete them. They will not do it. So if he either goes over here and selects those lines, he can do that by deleting. He can't uh, say trim. They've updated it, Al. It erases them now. It's oh, you're in 21? 21. I'm sorry. So prior, so no, that's a good point. They, they do this to us a lot. So um, they do change it, but anyway. It's trim. Let's come back to it. We're at uh, eight minutes in. Yep. Rectangle command I demonstrated. That's like a polygon command, but it's just you just click on the corners to draw rectangles. Chamfer. Chamfer and fillet allow you to put an edge on the corners. So if I wanted to chamfer something like my desk and I decided let's get rid of this. Now, the quickest way to get rid of it is to just click on it and then hit the delete key. Or put a box, green box, and then hit the delete key. That's the quickest, that's how I like to do it. And then if we look at the um, chamfer command, the chamfer command is in the modify commands and it's hidden under fillet. And so the first thing we have to do is set these up with a distance. And I do that by hitting the down arrow on my keyboard. It gives you all the options here. Chamfer also has the options in the command line. So as we start to use modify commands or draw commands, 
we want you to start to read the command prompt or to look at what the options are. And so I'm going to say distance and I'm going to say 0.25 and 0.25. And what that'll do is it'll allow me to chamfer a quarter of an inch off of these edges. If I want to use fillet, which will probably be my next slide, you set the radius for the value. And so we sweep, sweep back over here. And then if I wanted to do a fillet, um, let's say on these corners here for the lamp, we'd say fillet. You have to program in the radius the first time. After that, it remembers it. And so I'll say 0.25. And then I'll go and I'll grab this and that. And there's also, Joe, hit undo one, please, real quick. One more time. Okay, now go to fill it, please. And this goes also fill it and on radius, either one. Put a radius of 0.25, please, real quick. Also go down, hit uh, arrow going down, please, real quick. And go into, it says multiple. And then select one corner, please. Select the top one and do the next side. And all you have to do is click and keep on clicking. It automatically understands that you want to do multiple ones, not just one. Right, and you can trim between arcs as well as you can arc, you can trim between um, or fillet. The one thing about fillet is it trims it as it does it. And so you will notice things like this can happen. You can also you can set it to not. You can also set it not to trim it. Also, yes, and we'll go through that at a different time. I think if we go too too much, we'll never get our right. We don't want to get too deep. Yeah. So that's the fillet command, copy, and O snap. And so, copy commands are basically three steps. One step one, you select the copy command. Step two, you select what to copy. And three, where you want to copy it from. Okay. And actually four, where you want to copy it to. So here's how it works. Back to AutoCAD, I want to copy something. I want to copy these dots. Let's say I want more lemons. I go over here to copy. I select my lemon. I'll do it slower. Copy. Select the object. I can continue to select objects. So I could select this cherry also, and maybe a grape. And then I hit enter. Now it's done selecting. And then I can say, okay, copy it from here over to here. And it stays running. And so it allows you to make multiple copies. Again, copy, select what you want to copy hit enter. On this one, if we want to copy it from here to here. That's the first base point. That's the second base point. And what the slide tells you to do is to use O snaps. And we were turning them off. If we turn them back on, what you'll notice is that the O snaps will grab certain geometry when we hover by it. So if we hover by the center of one of the donuts, it'll, it'll magnetize it. And so when we say copy, and then it says select the object. I can select this. I hit enter. And then the base point, I get an O snap that says center. And so that just allows me to be picky and to be able to select exactly the center of my geometry. Okay, we're 13 minutes in. So all of a sudden time just flew. Rotate. Rotate again is a modify command, and it's very similar to all the modify commands where we select the rotate command, and then we select the object to rotate. So if I wanted to rotate something, let's say um, I want to copy this. Blue window selects only what's in it. Hit enter, 
and I'm going to take this and I'm just going to put it over here. And I'm going to rotate it. So to rotate it, I'll select rotate. I select what I want to rotate. I hit enter. And here's the base point. So if I hover, I can use the base point at this corner. And then it rotates it about that corner. I can do it again. I can rotate it. Same thing. Select the modify command. Select the objects to modify. Hit enter. Select the base point. Where do you want it to be attached? Where do you want the center of rotation to be around? And then you just rotate it. All right, a few more slides and then we'll end the recording. The point command allows you to create points on the screen. Um, not so much at this point, we don't really need to do too much, but you can have these different point styles. So if we come back in here to our drawing and we say point, You can't even see them. And so in order to be okay. able to see them, you have to go and you have to do point style and choose a point style. Then we can see them. Little things like that keep Al and I in business. It's, right. also, it's also nice with points. Uh, so if you're setting up like uh, water flows or uh, water pipes or sprinklers or electrical, or uh, lighting sections of a fence. fence like you go through the backyard and you want to add uh, every eight feet you have a mark you know around the perimeter of the backyard you can do fencing yep. things that are in standard units divide works like that and measure works like that and so it's really great because it automatically does the math for you so if i come in here and i want to divide this i can come in here and i can say divide and then it says select the object to divide right here. And then let's say I want to make this in three pieces. Now I get a point at every third piece. It doesn't actually cut it. It just puts points on it. And so if I go back here and I do divide again, and I say I want to divide this one, and I'm going to say five pieces, I'll get four of these, and it breaks it into five pieces. If I change the point style, Instead of those squares, I can get this little target. Okay. Measure does the same thing. It just measures it in units. And oh, snap. So, oh, snap. We went over already a little bit. Correct. We did the mirror command already when we did the door. You want to go over it real quick because we didn't have the video. Sure. So to mirror something, what we want to do, and I think the door is the best example for that. So if we come here to our door, and if I erase half of it. Now, if you don't want to erase some of it, like I don't want these green lines, hold the shift key and click on it again. And it will unselect it. And then to mirror it, what you would do, I'm going to turn off the grid so you can see it better. You'd say mirror. You'd select the objects to mirror. Hit enter. And then you give it the base point or the first point. So I'm going to go right down the middle here. And you can see it makes it like a ghost. And it's then symmetrical about that line. So we just drive it up the center. Erase the source object. If I say yes, it flips it. So I have to do it again. Select the objects, hit enter, and then it tells you first point of the mirror line. So read your command prompt. No. So that's a quick rundown on the mirror command. Object snap settings. We'll go over these later on. Same with break, please. Right. We don't really use these. These are kind of advanced. We, we have other commands. The hatch command is nice. We can use that. So if we wanted to hatch something, we can go in here and let's go with, um, yeah, purple. Hatch. 
and you have all these different patterns, which is really pretty cool. If you hit this down arrow, you can go through and let's say that we wanted to make this table out of um, bricks, why not? We can then click in that area and we'll get that brick pattern and then we can set it down You can also put on angles if you want to, oblique angles. Right. You can also adjust the colors and the color wheel onto it, blend it together. Depends on what you want to do with it at any one time. Exactly. And so once you have that hatch pattern set, you can then apply it. If you want to use a different pattern, you can go in here to the hatches and then you can just choose a different one. And you can see really great, really well automated. We'll go through the array command when we do the exercises in chapter three for the uh, furniture. We'll use the array command. Essentially what it does is it does this like flowers on a petal or like leaves on a flower petal or rows of a desk. And so we'll look at these polar arrays and then we'll also look at how you can determine distances, measurements. And so we can go through and determine how to measure things, how to use polygons. Grips are kind of my favorite thing. I use grips all the time. Basically, you can just activate it, you click on it, and then you can do something to it, like stretch it. And so when we look at the objects, and then when we put a grip on it, those are those blue squares. And then let's say these tables are a little too wobbly. I'm going to make the table wider. Make it with a grip. I can then take these grips and I can extend them. You'll figure it out. It's not too, it's kind of intuitive as you work with grips. Polar array will be able to array chairs and things like that. We'll come back to that. Polar tracking, you want to use this. And this is where uh, we'll start to wrap up the video. But if you do use polar, you'll like it. Because what it does is it gives you this pointer. And so when I use polar, and this is the polar tracking button here, if you look at it, I, I usually set mine up in 15 degree angles because the old drafting boards had a drafting machine that was set up at 15 degree angles. And here's how it works. If polar is on and you're drawing a line, you'll get this green tracking line. That's polar tracking, this green line at the end. And then if I bring this up 15 degrees, there's another track line, 30 track line. So if I go to 45 and I wanna make this a, let's say six inch line, I just point it, I type six, enter. Now that is a six inch line. I click on it, six inches. So when you use polar and you're drawing, it gives you these tracking lines, which makes sure everything kind of comes up according to the measurements, almost like we were drawing with a drafting machine. Everything can be nice and straight and you get to track that out. You can actually start to learn how to acquire other measurements by, they call it swiping. All right. And we're going to stop right here, Joe. Sounds good. So that completes our video lecture of chapter three.